Phrenologist Henry Higgins makes a bet with a friend that he can pass off young Eliza Doolittle, a simple flower seller, as a convincing, rich socialite just by teaching her how to speak properly. Thus we have one of the most popular and best known musicals of all time, Lerner and Lowe's My Fair Lady. Even if you've never seen it or don't know anything about it, you probably recognize some of the references to this musical. And at the very least, you might recognize some songs like I Could Have Danced All Night, Wouldn't It Be Loverly, Get Me to the Church on Time, and like that. It's one of the many movie musicals that the American Film Institute recognize. It used to be number 91 on the list, but was dropped in 2007. But we're still going to look at it to find out what's all the fuss about. Do you follow me? Why is the run gone? Serious. Higgins, I'm interested. What about your boast that you could pass her off as a duchess at the embassy ball, eh? I'll say you're the greatest teacher alive if you can make that good. I'll bet you all the expenses of the experiment that you can't do it. I'll even pay for the lessons. Oh, you're real good. Thank you, Captain. <laughs> you know, it's almost irresistible. <laughs> She's so deliciously low. So horribly dirty. Oh, I ain't dirty. I washed my face and hands before I come, I did. I'll take it. Like I said, this is one of those musicals that's talked about all the time, but not because of the songs or the dances or anything like that, but because of the story itself. The story, of course, is based on the stage musical My Fair Lady, which itself is based on a play by George Bernard Shaw called Pygmalion. And that story is pretty much just a very interesting retelling of the Cinderella story. Eliza Doolittle is poor, uneducated, and painfully simple-minded. Henry Higgins, a rather snobby and often rude man who studies the way that people speak and deplores the mangling of the English language that has occurred, turns her rough, common-spoken dialect into the soft-spoken, dulcet tones of a socialite and, in effect, turns her into that socialite. She goes from being a poor girl selling flowers to survive into a woman who is well-off, desirable, and fiercely independent. That's the Cinderella portion of the story, the rags to riches portion, but this story also gives us a look at the fairy godmother, Henry Higgins. He's not kind, patient, or understanding. He frequently belittles, insults, and even threatens Eliza Doolittle. But there seems to be a quiet sort of sincerity about his character. He truly wants Eliza to be better than she is. He wants everybody to be better than they are. I mean, two of his songs basically say, why can't everyone in the world be more like me? Granted, he does tend to see himself as the paradigm of mankind, but he believes that everyone has the potential to be better, and he's very impatient with those who have yet to realize that potential. The musical chronicles the relationship between these two characters, but what is that relationship exactly? Is it romantic? Is it just teacher to student? Do they love each other, hate each other, barely tolerate each other? Well, the musical doesn't give us a lot of answers on this front. The relationship is pretty hard to fathom. But what we learn by the end of the musical is regardless of whether they love each other or hate each other or however they feel toward each other, they need each other. Though the pupil has grown beyond the teacher, Eliza still needs Henry, and Henry still needs Eliza. The last line when Henry says in a supposedly careless tone, where the devil are my slippers, is just Henry being Henry. He hasn't really changed. He's the same way he always was and always will be. But even though he doesn't seem to care, Eliza knows better, and for the most part, so do we. So what's all the fuss about? The fascination from this musical comes with the relationship between Henry and Eliza and exactly what it is, but the substance of this musical is the disconnect between the rich and the poor. Eliza makes the crossover. She goes from being very poor to fairly well off, but once she gets there, she can never go back. She tries, and no one recognizes her from her old life except for her father, and that's because he's also crossed over. This is a musical that's actually not entirely feel-good. The musical numbers are entertaining enough, most of them, but we'll get to that in a minute, but there's something deeper that's being said here, and not necessarily in an overt way. Eliza crosses over to the other side, and she does grow considerably, but her fundamental nature remains unchanged. She lives out Henry Higgins' belief that anyone can realize their full potential, and when she actually does, Henry's reaction is first triumph, and then disappointment, because I think it's the first time that anything like that has really happened to him before, and he realizes that Eliza no longer needs him. Now, I can't say that I'm enamored with everything in this musical. My main objection to My Fair Lady is that, at times, it tries too hard to be a musical. There are many moments when a song is inserted into the narrative where it really isn't necessary. And I'm not talking about songs that don't further the plot, like Get Me to the Church on Time. Those songs are usually pretty enjoyable. Mostly, I'm talking about Henry songs, because Rex Harrison, who plays Henry Higgins, doesn't so much sing his songs as chant them 
and honestly, he doesn't even chant them very well. It's basically a Henry Higgins rant set to really mediocre music. And it gets really annoying really fast, to the point where you just wish that Henry Higgins would say what he wanted to say instead of trying to sing it. And I don't know, maybe this was by design a defining point for Henry Higgins' character or something, but it didn't work for me. There are also a few songs that serve to make what could have been a really subtle point way too obvious, like when the household staff is singing Henry Higgins' praises for training this poor young thing, and Eliza's just kind of off in the corner and everyone's ignoring her. Yeah, okay. Rich people are thoughtless douchebags. We got it. Let's move on. For all that, though, it's still a good musical. It's often overshadowed by other musicals on this list, and usually deservedly so, but for the most part, it's a pretty good story of a teacher and his relationship with his pupil. I wouldn't call it one of my favorite musicals, but I'd say the fuss is merited and it's worth a watch or two. On the worth meter, I'd give it a worth renting. And the next movie on the list, number 90 on AFI's list, is the Fred Astaire Ginger Rogers film, Swing Time. See you then.